clone stamping in Adobe Premiere Pro? Uh, kind of. It's masking, but it's the same concept. To show you guys what I'm talking about, first we should dive into Photoshop to actually dissect what clone stamping actually is. So I'm in Photoshop and I have these hot air balloons in the sky. And let's say I want to get rid of this hot air balloon. I would go to my clone stamp tool, click on this part of the sky. And basically what you're doing is you're taking this part of the sky and you're putting it over here. So if I start coloring this in, it's just the sky now, right? But as you can see, it has its limitations. Because like I said, we're only duplicating this image again on top of this image, and we're merely revealing that duplicated image. What do I mean by that? So say I click over here, and I'm gonna put this sky over onto this hot air balloon. If I were to keep spreading, you would see the rest of that duplicated image just being revealed in an alternate location, right? Same exact thing. So that's what we're going to do in Adobe Premiere. So I have the exact same image, except this time the, the balloons are moving. So what I would do is I would highlight my clip, alt click drag to duplicate the layer, go to your opacity, and then create a mask that's this part of the sky. Now you might think that you can just click and drag this window, but it doesn't work. Because what's happening is you're merely just moving the mask around. If I were to click this eyeball off and make the bottom layer invisible, you can see that this is the part that we've masked out. Moving the hand, like I said, merely moves the window. So how do we get this piece of sky over there? Well, you actually have to go to your position and move the whole image to the left. Let's say right there is good, right? Seamless. Now if you want, you can boost the feathering. As you can see, if we were to zoom in, there's kind of this harsh line. It's barely noticeable, but it's noticeable enough to someone who's trying to find it. Now if you were to feather it, let's click on Mask Path to get our highlight back up so we can see our window. And you increase the feather. And that should help make it a little bit more seamless. That's a lot better. Except now we're starting to see our, our balloon. Well, actually that brings me up to our next point. First, let's look at our mask. Okay, that looks good. The balloon isn't there. But if we were to keep playing, you can see that this balloon is starting to move from behind the mask. So how do we get around that? Because in clone stamping in Photoshop, you have a static image. You don't have to worry about time and movement. But since we're dealing with footage, we do. So we're going to have to animate our mask. Go to your mask path. Let's find out where that balloon is, is getting to. So about right here, the balloon starts being revealed from behind that mask. So we're gonna go about right here, right before the, the balloon is revealed. And we're gonna click the stopwatch tool on mask path. And then, we're gonna go to the point where it's starting to be revealed so we can see how big we want our mask to be spread. Right? So now we've created a second keyframe when we did that. So if you go in between these two keyframes, you can see the mask moving. And it's moving to keep covering up that, that balloon. Let's watch it. Gone. Now of course you're going to find yourself in situations that are a lot more dynamic with more camera movement, more things on the wall, more details you're going to have to get around. But this is the basic concept to start removing things from your scene that you don't want. Whether it be people in the background, light switches on walls, or anything of the sort, this is how you remove them. Of course you're going to have to have way more detailed masks and your animations are going to have to be way more fine-tuned. But again, just build off this concept and make it your own. Anyway, that's about it. It's a really simple concept and I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, comment, like, and subscribe for more videos like this one if you're into that. Until then, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.